Well, we're here at McNally Robinson, and we've been asking people here at the store, what are you reading? And uh, my co-host for the Manitoba Book Awards, Miss Lara Ray, yeah, is here with me now. I am. And I'm you, blushing. you read voraciously. Well, what's a, what's a, what's a bigger word than voraciously? Um, because you read more encyclopedi than encyclopedically. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, and you've got a book that you think is going to surprise me that you're reading now. I'm embarrassed, I'll be honest. Like, I, I thought, okay, when you asked me to do this, I could have lied, obviously, and I could have picked any book from the shelf that would have made me look quite, uh, quite stunning. But uh, this is literally what I'm reading right now. Ayn Rand's first novel, We, we the Living. And uh, I don't think I have to defend myself, first of all, Terry McLeod. I well, I wasn't planning <laughs> to, to, to take you to the Inquisition. But because that's just my guilt talking. So I'm going to defend myself. Okay, well, what is it about... And then I'm going to tell you the real reason I'm reading What is it about her that makes her so controversial? Well, what makes her so controversial was that, uh, uh, especially in a contemporary setting, is that we know that Grant Greenspan, who ran the Fed literally, was an acolyte. And her allergy, philosophically, to altruism is part of the machine that is destroying the United States of America. Because, as you know, her not only was she a novelist, a popular, a very extremely popular novelist, she was also, in her own mind at least, uh, a philosopher. And her philosophy uh, school was called Objectivism, and actually had a small uh, coterie of cult-like uh, followers, uh, shamefully many from Canada. And, um, but basically, um, if I may uh, frame it up, I think Roger Ebert, uh, describe yes. her philosophy best when you said, uh, I'm aboard, pull up the lifeline, right? <laughs> Which is basically what it is. Uh, and it is the idea of um, uh, basically that charity is a destructive force and so on and so on and so on. And where it came from, and this is why I would defend this book in particular, is that she grew up in, in, in Soviet Russia. She actually grew up at the cusp between Imperial and Soviet Russia. And uh, so everything in her philosophy is a anti, and this is her favorite word, collective impulse. She was a incredible um, accolade and, and, uh, and, um, and uh, 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 dictator of individualism. If I may use that ironically. What's the story that this book tells? Well, this is a story of a young woman called Kira who basically pushes against uh, the system and says, I am an individual. And it's full, like many Ayn Rand novels, in her rather clunky uh, way of introducing kind of uh, her ideas, which are all about uh, the individual. No, no person uh, should succumb to the will of another except uh, if a man is raping a woman, because every romantic scene in an Ayn Rand novel is, by today's standards, basically a rape scene. There's a lot of that, you know, slap across the face, punch, and then, and then the sex occurs, right? So very problematic from a feminist standpoint. But I have to tell you, there's two things. One is, as an intellectual challenge, uh, it does appear on the surface that her ideas are, are bankrupt and be, can proven to be bankrupt, but they're based on at least in her mind, Aristotelian principles. And so it's actually much harder to say what is fundamentally wrong with Ayn Rand's philosophy, uh, as it seems at first, because she is quite slippery. And I don't mean slippery in a disingenuous way philosophically. It's just when you actually think about it, it's very attractive. That's why when people read Atlas Shrugged at 15 or 16 years old, they actually become uh, quite, quite driven by it, because there is something quite inspirational in her defense of individualism. And this is a very important conversation we're having right now, this push against you know, what's, what's uh, considered to be groupthink or political correctness. I actually call it taste and, uh, and uh, a uh, uh, multiculturalism, but other people uh, distresses them. Uh, that people have viewpoints contrary to So does this to book own. tell us about Trump's America? No, because this is about Soviet Russia. I mean, the irony of it is, in an attempt to be Randian, Trump is turning uh, the United States into a more Soviet model. It's, it's ultra-nationalistic, it's uh, protective, it's territorial, it's militaristic, it has imperial ambitions, and so on and so on. Uh, it's not about uh, freedom. Right? It's about freedom from bank regulations and so on. It's freedom for the rich to rob from the poor, which she was against. She was 
uh, an accolade for manufacturing and making things and creating things with your hands, very much in a tactile way, for your own benefit instead of the benefit of the state. So it is based in that sense on the kind of manufacturing economic model she would have been, in my view, repulsed by venture capitalism and people who basically make money doing nothing. I think she would describe them as second-handers in the way that they describe people that take welfare and stuff and, uh, as second-handers. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a very timely book in a way. Uh, it's also the best written of her books uh, in terms of the cliches and so on. And then just as a human being, I'm fascinated by her. And also I think because she was a woman, I think she's treated more harshly. I think that some of the prejudice against her is sexist. And she was incredibly successful in her time and, and had the ear of many people. And so I think she's an important figure whether you like her or not. And I'm very interested in perhaps doing a one-person show where I play her, and because uh, I have some physical uh, resemblance, uh, I don't know if there's a picture of her. I was about to ask if you're yes. planning uh, any stand-up about her at the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. I probably won't do any stand-up about her, but many funny things have been said, and also she was the inspiration for Russia's seminal 2112 album, concept album. So that's the first time I saw her name was because uh, Neil Peart was obsessed with her for uh, for a while, the drummer in Rush. And so that's the Neil first time... Neil was obsessed with Ayn Rand. Rand. Yes, and the whole 2112 novel is based on Randian principles. They actually create a world very much like in We the Living and in Anthem, and then people, individuals, tear down that kind of state mechanical apparatus. And so the whole album is based on Randian uh, philosophy and principles. The other very funny thing that was said about her was by Christopher Hitchens, when they asked what Hitchens thought of her. He said, I never thought the problem with the world was there was enough selfish people in it. <laughs> So that's what I'm reading. And there's a gorgeous graphic novel uh, about her that I highly recommend as well that they have here at McNally's. Yeah. Well, listen, let's so that's talk, what I'm reading. Yeah, let's talk some more about books the next time we get together here. I, okay? I want to know what you're reading. All right, well, I'll, I'll tell you, but not right now. <laughs>